Anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm not going to complain. I am, however, going to uh, conduct a tradition, which is new, but good, and always a little bit messy. It's a new tradition. It's, it's like our tradition. episodes. Ha! <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Remember when we used to edit these? I don't. We did? Hey, well, I did. <laughs> Good episode art. Thanks. I used to edit them. And then I stopped because I said to Kyle, you know, Kyle, if we're going to start and we're and we are, by the way, Kyle, we're doing two episodes this week. Um, we are just uh, to tune in on on Wednesday when we release the second episode. Okay, what is the second episode? Let's just uh, let's just totally derail whatever I was saying. It doesn't matter. Oh my gosh, Jared, you're so derailing this. <laughs> um, let me look here real quick. We are so today. Today's episode, we are going to be doing the Big Ten preview. And so, I guess you can you can guess what the next episode is. Is it a national I'll, I'll preview? Everyone, I'll get I'll get I'll give everyone two seconds, or Jared can can just flat it. out say it. Yes, it's That's the national true. preview then. All right, doing so the national not, preview not, on Wednesday. We're doing the Big Ten preview today. We're gonna do some overs. We're gonna do some unders. We're gonna talk some shit. Um, and I'm gonna say this right off the top. We're not gonna go super in depth on Ohio State. This is an Ohio State podcast. If you are tuning into this as a uh, someone who is a casual fan of Ohio State, maybe you you check out during the summer and then you pop back in in August. No, we're all busy adults, no judgment. But if that's what something you do and you're looking for like an Ohio State preview, or if you're from an outside fan base looking for like an Ohio State preview, we did an entire episode. Um, it's called Ohio, you know, an Ohio State preview for casual fans and for outside fans where we assume you knew nothing about Ohio State coming in and did a preview from from there. Uh, so, if, again, if you're coming in here looking for Ohio State fans perspective on Ohio State, you're not really going to get it. We're not going to waste a bunch of time talking about Ohio State this episode. Kyle. Well, let's 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 get right into it then. Let's, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, before we get into the meat of it, just quick, quick thing, as I'm sure a lot of people have heard this, but we're just going to. We're just going to go ahead and um, get it out of the way here. Blocko, Blocko has uh, been announced here. For those who haven't found out, uh, it is Cody Simon, one, one, one of the one of the guys that we thought was was in the runnings to get the Blocko jersey. So couldn't 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 happen to a, a better guy. Yeah, uh, you, you and, have, he's one of the oldest guys on the team. He's a guy who fought back from injuries. Um, it, you know, he's in the exact mold of someone who you would expect to get the Blocko. Exactly. And likewise, as for the captains for, for this year, uh, Cody Simon, Jack Sawyer on the defense, Emeka Buka and Trevion Henderson on the offense. And those are your four captains for this year. Yeah. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I just quick appreciation to Ryan day for making the captainship special again and not having there be like, six or seven or eight captains like there was yep. under urban Meyer. Yep. All right. Let's get into the big 10, big 10 welcomes for additional members to the 2024 season here. While so the big, ten, big 10 is up to 18, for 18 now. teams for now. Yes. Or now I'm just, we're not going to go down this path. Cause I'd talk about it for 30 minutes or more. I think the magical number is 24 or 26, but hey, we're not going to go down that path right now. Yep. All right. All right. Which team do you want to start with? We got, we got, we got a lot here. So we're going to spend just a tiny bit of time with each one here, but yeah, let's, where, do, where would you like to start? Let's start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. Let's work our way up. Um, All right. Also, one one last one last. We've done we've done a couple one one last <laughs> one real quick last thing. Shout out to Pick Six Preview, who we lean on heavily 
when we do these preview shows, both the Big Ten preview and the uh, national preview. Kyle and I have been pouring over the Pick 6 preview guide. Um, Pick 6 preview. Is it Pick 6 previews.com, Kyle? It's my favorite, like, preseason guide. Is that the correct website, Pick 6 previews.com? So just shout out to them. This episode unofficially brought to you by Pick 6 previews. Very unofficially. Very, very, very unofficially. All right. Indiana, Kyle, let's... You know, I I'd say there's four teams at the bottom. We're not doing a tier list today. We like we like our tier list. We're not doing our tier list today. But if we were, um, whatever the bottom tier would be, would contain Indiana, Purdue, Northwestern, Illinois. Do you disagree? Or would you add would you add Michigan mm-hmm. State to that? Or would you not include a team in that? Maybe. You said Indiana and who else? Indiana, Purdue, Northwestern, Illinois are the bottom tier teams. For this season, you're saying? Yes, 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 yes. Kyle, we're previewing the 2024 mm-hmm. season. We're officially mm-hmm. in 2024 I may, mode, I may, previewing the 2024 season. Okay, I may, good. I may disagree. I good, may disagree. Good. It's a better, it's like, it makes for a better podcast than when you disagree. Why do All you right. disagree? All right. All right, Indiana. Let's, let's let's just start with Indiana. We'll we'll get to the other teams okay, here. We'll, we'll okay. We'll we'll we'll, so actually, we'll, we'll come last back. year. We'll come last back. year, last year, Indiana was five and seven, three and six in the Big Ten. Uh, one trend that I see with the Big Ten in general here: awful, awful out of out of uh, conference scheduling here. <laughs> yeah, uh, looking looking at the out of conference for Indiana. FIU, Western Illinois, and Charlotte. All right. All right. There's your, there's potentially three, should be three wins there for Indiana. And they're, they're going to need, they're going to need these wins here. I, I, I project, I predict um, Indiana to go six and six this year. They get, they, they get their three out of conference uh, games and pick up three more in season here. Okay. Um so you're go so the over under for Indiana this year is 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 five and a half. You're taking the over. So I'll take the over. I will take the over for Indiana. Yep. Let me because I think because I think there are worse teams in the Big Ten. I I, I agree with that sentiment. Indiana. I don't know that there's I don't know that there's four worse teams in the Big Ten. Well and the good and the good thing is that Indiana plays <laughs> those the three teams that are Worse than them. And that's well, it's, not, it's not a good thing unless you win them. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, they have a new head coach. I don't want to pronounce mm-hmm. his yep. name in Sloopcast fashion. I don't. It, it, Kurt Signetti. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Italian with it. I don't know if he's Italian or not. Uh, he is from James Madison. He brings 17, 17 via the transfer portal. 17 James Madison players with him from Indiana, or excuse me, from James Madison to Indiana. Um, That being said, Indiana lost, Kyle, Indiana lost 35 players, 35 players to the transfer portal. So, well, that is a lot, but typically when you do see a coach gone, you especially recent in recent years, you, you see a mass exodus. Yeah, but you lost. I mean, and I don't know, it might be generous to call Indiana players, big 10 players, but you, you lost 35 big 10 players and you replaced them with 17 Sunbelt players. Uh, and by the way, when I say Sunbelt players, James Madison, uh, just got to the FBS. Yeah. So it might be generous to even call these players Sunbelt players. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they, especially on the defensive side, Kyle, especially on the defensive side, are a mess. They they are a mess defensively. I I am sorry. I disagree. I don't see. I'm going to go under five and a half. Um, yep. Looking at the 
uh, pick six preview, Big Ten unit ranks. Indiana on the defensive line is 18th. As Kyle pointed out, that is yeah. out of 18. Uh, their yeah, linebackers that's not good. are ranked 18th. Again, that is out of 18. Now, Kyle, their defensive backs are also 18th. All three defensive position groups. They're ranked yeah, not good. dead not last. Good. Now, if you look over to their offensive side, I mean, it's better. They're in that, that they aren't all dead last. In fact, none of them are dead last, which is that's I saying something, right? Uh, quarterback 14, running backs 15, wide receiver slash tight end. By the way, I don't like that those are combined, but whatever. Uh, 12th, offensive line 15th. Their best position okay. group is wide receiver slash tight end, where they are ranked 12th. All right, so you, in the so you got 10. Indiana under. You got I Indiana do. under then, right? I do. Five and a half? I do. All right. All right. Um, do you want to go with the order that you have here, or do you For just the sake of do... simplicity, well, let's do that. This, this is, by the way, the order okay. in here is the, um, it's the pick six preview order reversed. So okay. um, if you look at the pick six preview Big Ten rankings, they have Indiana and Purdue tied for last. Gotcha. Well, so I do agree with them. I do re- agree with them that Purdue is the worst. So uh, uh, that's not what they yeah, said. You, they said I know Purdue they're t- they're tied, tied for they're worst. Tied. But I, I got Purdue. I got Purdue being dead last in the Big Ten. Big Ten here. So I schedule does not help them. No, uh, they're three out of conference games, which by the way, is probably some of the better ones that we're going to talk about here, but they play Indiana State, Notre Dame, and at Oregon State. Oregon State should be noted, you know, was was a pretty, de- like a surprisingly decent mm-hmm. team last year. Yep. They're not going to be that team this year. No, um, they're, they're not. They're not. They're, and Purdue, Purdue, Purdue has some tough games. They have some tough, tough games this I, year. I agree with you in that Purdue is going to look just as bad, if not worse than Indiana, looking at the record at the end of the season. Yeah. So last I year, actually last year, think I actually think that Purdue's a better football team than Indiana personally, but because their schedule is yeah. their schedule, they're mm-hmm. not going to, at the end of the season, look better than Indiana. Yeah. But I, I do. So, I think they have superior talent for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, well, one of those wins um, with Indiana was against Purdue here. And because I, I do think Purdue is the worst looking, looking at the schedule here last year, they went four and eight, three and six in the big 10 this year, Jared. Yeah. I don't think they're going to get a single win in the big 10. This is my projection. They're going to go over nine, finish the season one and 11. I think they beat Illinois. I think they can beat Northwestern. I, I think I'd, they will beat I'd Northwestern. Give, I'd, I'd give the edge to Illinois. It is over at Illinois. Um, Purdue and Northwestern, I was kind of a toss-up for me there. And really, those really those were like the only two wins I could potentially see in the Big Ten, but I, I, I ended up um, not giving it to, to Purdue. So four and a half, yeah, I'll, I'll easily take the under for that. I'm going over. Um, I I think of the bottom four teams, and I do think that it's a bottom four, although Michigan State could prove me wrong, uh, depending upon how bad they are. But I'm going to say it's a bottom four teams, and I actually think Purdue's the best team of the bottom four. Again, mm. that's not to say that their record will show that because they do have a considerably tougher schedule than the other bottom four teams. So I think maybe Kyle and I, maybe our mix up here is, are are we predicting the results or are we talking about the actual quality of the team? Because I, again, of the bottom four teams, I think Purdue's the best team there, but they have to play 
Ohio State and Penn State and Oregon and Wisconsin and Nebraska and Notre Dame. Like they just have mm-hmm. a they have a nasty schedule. They they do. They do. But yeah, I think I think Purdue might be might have the better, better, better team overall. But yeah, their schedule will not. So will not, um, over not unders at here, four so. and a half. They can beat Indiana State. They yep. will beat Indiana State. Um, mm-hmm. Though I think they beat Indiana, I think they can beat Michigan State. So let me just hold off on Michigan State for right now. I think they beat Northwestern. I think they beat Illinois. And I think between Michigan State and Oregon State, you have a maybe hanging out there. And if they just beat one of those teams, that puts them to five wins, which gets me the over. Yeah. I just got their sole win being their being their home opener there. I just I don't see them going to Oregon State getting a win, to Illinois to get a win, to Michigan State, to Indiana. I don't see them getting wins there. The uh, only potential one I could see is hey, maybe Kyle, home to Northwestern. Can we agree to disagree? We're talking way too much about Purdue. We need to We are all clock. right. Northwestern. Northwestern, we have uh four and a half. Four and a half of the over and under. I think it's a good number, uh, but yeah, it's, I, I don't, I don't see the four, I don't see the four and a half here for Northwestern. So I, I, I take the under uh, Miami of Ohio, Duke, Eastern Illinois. Is there out of conference there? Uh, I think they'll two get wins two and of those three there. Yep. Yep. Two and one in there, but what, what did I have here? So I had here. They get a win over Miami, Ohio, Eastern Illinois, and pick up a win against Purdue. So I have I have Northwestern going three nine this year after an amazing turnaround last year where they went eight and five. Yeah, I, I think I do think they take a couple of steps backwards this year. Yeah, uh, Dave Braun returns um, after like a really surprising eight and five season in twenty twenty three mm-hmm. after all of their. Uh, preseason offseason issues that they had. Um, but the, the talent at North, they lost either so via much. graduation, yeah. the transfer portal. They lost a ton of players and they had a pretty small recruiting class. They didn't bring in many guys via the portal. I think Northwestern is going to be bad. I agree with you. I'm going under on four and a half. Yep. All right. All right. Nice and quick. That's what I like. Um, Illinois. Illinois was five and seven last year. Can you believe um, this is Brent Bielema's fourth year at Illinois? It does not feel like that, does it? It does, does not. But he's got he's got to do he's got to do a little bit better here if his seat doesn't. Well, I really don't know if his seat will actually get hotter. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what type of expectations they have at Illinois, and yeah. if they're expecting this team to be good this year, they're wrong. Now. Mm-hmm. Brett Miel, Brett Bielema entering his fourth year, a lack of talent reflects on him at this point. It's 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 not, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, yeah, they they actually had like some pretty like they they didn't have a good team last year, but they did have some good players last year. They actually really mm-hmm. had some good players last year, but they're yeah, they all had gone. A really good. Uh, I'm forgetting what his name is. That really good. Um, was it defensive tackle? Yeah, they had two really good yeah. defensive tackles. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. really good defensive back. I'm blanking on names at the moment. Um, yeah. but they had, they had several, uh, really, uh, good wide receivers some good, in fact, impactful players, but they're all gone. They didn't really replace yeah. them. They didn't replace them at all. Um, I, I think, I, I, I think that Illinois is definitely in the running for worst team. Um, their schedule yeah, I- is not is going to help as them. bad. Yep, their schedule is going to help them. Eastern Illinois, Kansas, Central Michigan, all at home. I think they can win those three. Kansas would be tougher, but I, I think Illinois can get those three wins there. I and mm, they pick and they pick up th- and they pick. I up feel, three I feel like they lose one of them. I, I'm not. Even, I don't know which th- one, but I just don't see this Illinois team winning three in a row. And I and I predict I predict them to get three more along the way there. Uh, I got them beating Purdue, Sparty, and Northwestern here to go six and six. One win better than last year. 
Yeah, I'm not nearly that optimistic. I'm going to go under. I think they beat. Okay. I, I think in the first three games, I think they win two of them. I think they drop one of them. I think they lose to Purdue. They a bunch of other games that they're obviously going to lose. And then I think they actually like Northwestern feels like a 50 50. But even at that point, even if they win it, I'm still only giving them four games. Uh, I, I'm going yeah. hard under here. All right, that's fine. All right, uh, so those were the bottom four teams um, from what you have here. Uh, Michigan might... State is yeah, debatably to in Michigan that State, tier. Before we get into Michigan State, though, we're going to take our first uh, quick ad break here. Um, if you want to avoid these ad breaks, head on over to thesloopcast.com where you can find all of our links, including a link to become a patron over at... Um, patreon.thesloopcast.com um, to avoid these ads. Check, head on over there, become a, become a member, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a quick break and be right back. And we're back. Um, All right. Sparty, Jared. Sparty. Sparty, Sparty last year went four and eight. Yeah. Two and seven in the Big Ten. Not. I got them doing pretty much the same, pretty much the same. I got I got them four and eight. Uh, they do have some. They do have a favorable um, out of conference FAU, TV A mm-hmm. and M, which I'm, a lot of people would be like, who? Listen, you said and, PV A and M, and I came up with an answer yeah. in my head, but I'm not going to say it out loud. Yeah, it's a. Uh, that is a FCS for those questioning, and they do go on the road to Boston College. Is that Prairie View? Uh, yeah, I is it really? I I actually have Sparty uh, winning all three of their out of conference games, uh, mm-hmm. but only getting one win in conference here, <laughs> and that's against Purdue. So three well, out of conference, on one too hard, one. One in conference, we got Sparty going four and eight, one and eight in the Big Ten this year. Um, I I agree with you enough. It's a, it's a, it's a rebuilding it's a rebuilding it. season for Sparty. Yeah, I, I for each of these teams, and we're, I'm not necessarily like just reading the storylines verbatim, but for each of these teams, I have a one sentence storyline written. Uh, but th- I'm going to read it verbatim this time because I pointed it out. I wrote uh, Michigan State makes an excellent hire, bringing in Oregon State head coach Jonathan Smith. Uh, but he's without 33 transfer portal departures and in what can only be called a rebuilding season. Yep. That that's the storyline for Michigan State this year. It's just get better as a team. Show everyone you're competent. Show the recruits that you're competent. Mm-hmm. Try and bring in some talent. Try and get this ball yeah. rolling in two or three years. They're, That's they're Michigan middle of the, State right now. Their middle of the schedule is tough, tough, tough. Yeah. Ohio, Ohio, Ohio State, State Oregon, at Oregon, Iowa, week. at Michigan. They do get the bye week That's in between tough. Oregon and Iowa. They do. They do, but. Everyone has two bye yikes. weeks this year, by the way. Just they tossing do. that out. All right. Jared's Golden Gophers. Not my Golden Gophers. They went six and seven last year, six and seven. Uh, but their schedule in, in conference does not. I I don't like <laughs> who they play in, in conference. I, I think they're a better team than in the end. I think they're going to be a better team than what their record ultimately shows. Uh, they, they do. They they're out of conferences, um, North Carolina. Rhode Island, which is an FCS, and Nevada. Yeah. Which I got them I got them winning two of those three. I think that's and, fair. And 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 just like Michigan State, I think I I do not like their their schedule in conference. I they play a lot of tough teams, some of them on the road that's maybe maybe 50-50, but being on the road kind of give the favor to the home team there. I, I got it. I got Minnesota only winning one game in in conference here. Oh, in that's, conference. That's against, I'm like, did you already give them two? Okay, in, never mind. In, in Illinois against Illinois, so I got them going. I, uh, just I got them going three nine one and eight. 
the thing is that Illinois is the only gimme on their Big Ten schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, could they beat Rutgers? Sure. Could they beat Maryland? Sure. Could they beat UCLA? Sure. Um, But the only gimme in their Big Ten schedule is Illinois. Um, I'm going to go under. Um, PJ Fleck entering his eighth year and is, I would say, is on the hot seat at this point. Um, He does not have a lot of talent on this year's rendition of the Golden Gophers. Um, He has uh, Darius Taylor at running back, who is uh, was a freshman last year, is very good running back. Um, They have. Um. Daniel Jackson at wide receiver and they have a really veteran O-line group like that. That should be stated as well. They do have a really veteran offensive line group, including uh, an excellent offensive tackle. But. I think that they're going to struggle. Pretty badly. (sighs) Talent wise, especially on the defense when they play better teams. All right, let's move on to UCLA. Uh, the first new member of the Big Ten that we get to talk about here. Yeah. Uh, last year they last year they went eight and five under Chip Kelly. Under Chip Kelly. Uh, four and five in the Pac-12. And yeah, I definitely think they're going to see a step back, especially being in the Big Ten here. They're not going to get four wins in the Big Ten here. I actually have them getting half that much here. Uh, they play Hawaii, LSU, and Fresno State. Uh, Fresno State at the very end of the of the uh, season, as they're out of conference there. Uh, two wins there. I got two wins there for UCLA, and they pick up another two along the way. I have them uh, winning home against Indiana, and they do pick up up another win, and I through in there that they're going to beat Minnesota there. So I got them going four and eight this year, two and seven in the big 10. So under, under for the four and a half projection. Yeah, it's, it's a tough schedule. You got LSU, Oregon, Penn state, Nebraska, who we'll talk about Nebraska and how tough they may or may not be. Um, Iowa, USC, Washington, like it's, it's a tough schedule. Um, yeah. That being said, they are they they bring in an excellent quarterback, Ethan uh, Garbers. Um, they all you know they lost Chip Kelly. They had a pretty decent la- uh, defense last year, but they lost eight starters off of that defense. Um, it's I, it's going to be tough, in my opinion. Uh, that being said, four and a half is pretty low, especially when you have Hawaii, Indiana, and Fresno State on the schedule. So you only need to pick up two more wins after that. But if you actually go and look at who, where you get those second wins and your best options are Minnesota, Rutgers and Washington, Mm -hmm. which aren't pushovers by any means. So, yeah, I'm going to go under here. All right. All right. Let's move on to Maryland. Maryland went eight and five last year, four and five in the Big Ten. Um, I think this year... I mean, they do they do lose um, Baby Tula, um, and I yeah. just I think I think that the lack of talent is going to show on the offense this year. Uh, UConn at Virginia and Villanova for their out of conference uh, schedule, and I got them I got them winning two of those. Wait, hold on, let me look. Uh, no, I actually got them uh, winning all three over their out of conference there, but they pick, they only get to pick up three more in conference. My projection here, they beat Sparty, Indiana, and Northwestern to go six and seven, three and six in the Big Ten. So you have them under the six and a half? Just total. under that six and a half, yes. I think that's probably fair. Again, kind of like what we're talking about with UCLA, um, they have what I would say five pretty gimme wins. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, hey, I only need two more. 
and like Michigan State is very, very, very winnable, especially early in the season. They, you know, they, it's, that's a good draw. You know, you get a team with a lot of turnover, second game of the season. Okay. Now we're up to six. They may start the season going four and oh. <laughs> Kyle, I don't think it's ridiculous. And by the way, remember that Maryland, didn't they start like five and oh last year? Um, well, why, why are you talking? I'll, I'll look real quick. It's either it was either five and zero or six and zero. Opening schedule: UConn, Michigan State, Virginia, Villanova, Indiana, Northwestern. It is totally conceivable they open up the season six and zero. Totally conceivable. That being said, they then have to play USC. Who I don't think USC is great, but I think USC is better than Maryland. Minnesota, it's a very winnable game. They won't beat Oregon. I don't think they're as good as Rutgers, is, although they're pretty mm-hmm. even. So yeah, I they don't were, think they they're as good you're, you're as Iowa. Right, and they'll lose to Penn State. But this is a really... Mar- Maryland and Rutgers, and we'll talk about Rutgers next, but Maryland and Rutgers are huge beneficiaries of the Big Ten East no longer existing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They Maryland both have off, very winnable schedules. Last year. They did start off 5-0 and last year. I totally lost. conceivable they go 6-0 and this year. I, I don't think Michigan State and Virginia are total gimmies, although I think they should win both of those games. Um, yep. Agreed. I, I, I have over on six and a half. Like you're going to win right. your first six games. I'm going to take the over on that because I think getting an upset over USC or Minnesota. I don't actually I don't even think Minnesota is an upset. I think they're just roughly on par with Minnesota. I think they're roughly on par with Rutgers. They just win one of those games. We're over six. I take my money. Yeah, actually, you're right. I'm, I'm now that I'm looking at my sca- at my projection here and then we'll move on to Rutgers after this. Yeah, um, actually, yeah, it is. I got I got Maryland starting off six and zero, oh, but then losing their their final uh, their final games there. You have them. Right. You have them go a total slide after beating Northwestern. Yeah. Whew. Yep. I do. I mean, it's possible. I don't <laughs> want to be like that, Kyle. That's ridiculous because it's it's not ridiculous. It's possible. Yeah, but I don't see it right. happening. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Rutgers. They're they, they're going to struggle. To... Just want to say they're going to struggle offensively, but we'll have a pretty good defense. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to Rutgers here. Rutgers seven and six last year, uh, three and six in the Big Ten. Uh, I I think they'll do very similar. They're they're out of conference is winnable. Uh, Howard Akron to start off the season before a very before their bye game, and then they head on over to Virginia Tech. I don't think I don't think they'll win at Virginia Tech. At Virginia Tech is always tough to to play, uh, but I I do like their in conference schedule here. They they do have. Um, Minnesota, they do have Maryland and Illinois and Michigan stay here. I, th- I think Rutgers will actually be a a decent team. Yeah. Um, I still think there's teams that will have a worse record and be yeah, yeah. actually be better than Rutgers, but Rutgers schedule is very favorable for them. I actually yeah. got them. You, you have six and a half here. I got them seven and five. Yeah, I, I, I think seven and five is probably the correct answer. Um, I think they have three gimmies on the schedule, Howard, Akron, Illinois. And, but the thing is, I don't have them as a, well, yeah, they're absolutely going to lose that game anywhere on their schedule. Mm-hmm. Nowhere yeah. on their schedule. Am I saying that's a loss? I'm, I, I, I categorized all of the schedules into wins, losses, and maybes. And I leaned heavily into the maybes. They sure. are three wins and the rest are maybes. Uh, <laughs> so Rutgers has a huge spectrum of where they could finish this season. Um, 
A storyline I wrote for this one, Greg Shano looks to take advantage of the dissolvement of the Big Ten East and an overall weak schedule to take Rutgers to the next level with a flawed but solid team. Fair enough. All right, let's, uh, let's taking, talk about... The, taking the over, by the way. I don't know if I actually said it. All right. Let's talk about the neck, um, the second newcomer here for the Big Ten. Washington. Washington, 14-1 and one last year, coming up short in that national title game here. And totally, totally, totally different team if you if you haven't been paying attention the offseason here. <laughs> Going to be a totally... Totally different season here. You have here both six of last year's six and a half in the over under when they went fourteen and one last year. Yeah, and it just I, I I totally understand why, but just yeah. hearing that, yeah. Both Michigan, uh, the the two teams in the national title game last year, Michigan and Washington. Neither team is recognizable. No, neither team Washington, is recognizable. Washington did. Washington did get out um, from the portal transfer portal. Will Rogers from Mississippi State. Sure. See how he does. See see how he does over at Washington. But they're in for a rude awakening uh, <laughs> coming into the coming into the Big Ten here. Uh, I think I think it's kind of fifty fifty in my opinion. I think they'll get some they'll get some wins, but then they're going to get some tough games as well too. Like they. They do play Penn State. They do play Michigan and Iowa. Some of the tougher teams in the in the Big Ten here. It's like but they also games, get Northwestern, Indiana, yep. UCLA. Um, mm -hmm. I have I have this team, and I'm I'm higher on Washington than I think most team than most prognosticators are. Um, I acknowledge that, but I have sure. them having six solid wins. And okay. with it being well, six and a half, yeah. I think they can pick up another win somewhere. Uh, Weber State, gotcha. I, Eastern Michigan, Washington State, Northwestern, Indiana, UCLA are all just solid wins, in my mm -hmm. opinion. And yeah, at that point, you just need to pick up one additional win. Um, I I think Michigan's a toss up. I think Rutgers is a toss up. Um Iowa would be an upset, but I don't think it would be a huge upset. I think USC is a toss up yeah. uh, and they'd have no mm -hmm. business winning against Penn State or Oregon. But hey, they beat Oregon twice last year. Granted, totally different That's, team out of Washington. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got the main four. I got them eight and four this year. Yeah. Their four, their four losses being Iowa, USC, Penn State and Oregon. Needs to be said, I, DeBoer no longer with this team. The entire coaching staff mm -hmm. went with him to Alabama. Um, yep, totally unrecognizable team. Yeah. Penix is gone. Kyle points out they bring in Will Rogers from Mississippi state, but it's a totally different team than, than the Huskies we saw last year. Yep. All right. Let's, let's move on to the fighting fickles over at Wisconsin. They went seven and six last year. Seven six five and four in the Big Ten here, uh, and Luke Fickle's first year. So this is the second year at at Wisconsin here, which also, uh, by the way, feels weird. I, I, I feel like this is a very average. Does it feel like average. Fickle's been at Wisconsin longer than this being it, it his does. second year? This is, this feels like uh well this feels like it's a very average, maybe below average Wisconsin team that we've yeah. typically usually see here uh, very favorable well two of their out of conference are very favorable <laughs> western michigan western michigan and south dakota then they do play alabama <laughs> in week three kyle you i i, I <laughs> said home. i said home against alabama i said that i went through all of these schedules and i marked easy wins easy losses and the rest got the in between call me crazy i marked alabama as an in between calling you crazy right now jared stop it Just i stop. marked alabama as an in between do i think wisconsin is that good no i don't that being said alabama has had had an entire coaching staff turnover 
They had a pretty large amount of player turnover. A lot of the times these talent rich teams look incredibly human when they're trying to put in a new system. Maybe it gets a little bit cold on September 14th. <laughs> Not that cold, Jared. Not but, that cold. But maybe a little bit cold on September 14th. You don't know. You don't know what the... Listen, it's just one day, Kyle. It's just one day. You just need one I day know, of cold. But I'm just saying... It's not ridiculous. It's not totally... It's kind of ridiculous. But it's not totally okay. ridiculous. Six and a half... I'm I'm just going to move on. Six and a half is the over under here. I got them under. I got them under uh, going five and seven. Tough, they got they got some tough games. They do. Um, mentioned, we mentioned Alabama. They play USC. They play um, they play Penn State and Iowa and Oregon and Nebraska. Yeah. They tough, do avoid Ohio State. I, they do. They do avoid Ohio State. They avoid State, Michigan. But, not that I think that's necessarily a huge deal this year. Um, I think they have four easy wins in oh, Western yeah. Michigan, South Dakota. Well, South Dakota is not that easy of a win. Northwestern, South, South Dakota Minnesota. is not that easy of a win, if we're being honest. Um, you, you can't. You, oh, ah, holy crap, Kyle. Hold on. Actually, let's stop and think about this for a second. They got. There, that's the Jackrabbits, right? I'm not mistaken on that. It's the South Dakota Jackrabbits. Mm -hmm. That's a really good FCS team. With them hosting Bama the next week, they need to show up to that South Dakota game with their heads on straight and not looking forward to Alabama. If they yep. get caught sleeping because Alabama is showing up next week, Jackrabbits will make them pay for it. That's all I'm saying. Yep. That's all a right. good FCS team. Um, that being said, four solid wins. Uh, in order to surpass the over-under, I'd need an additional three wins, which is possible, but difficult. Yeah. Um, so yep. I'm gonna go under. under. Um I th I think that I think talent-wise, the team's just very average outside of their offensive line, which is pretty good. They do have a pretty good offensive line. Um but the rest of the team's just pretty damn average. Yep. All right, we're going to take our second ad break real quick, and we'll finish up the rest of the Big Ten teams here. So, uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Kyle, I was going to totally float past that one. Thank you. Um, Nebraska's up right, next. Nebraska, Nebraska ne is up next here. Uh, Nebraska's all over the place as far yeah, as prediction the goes. Place, yeah. There's a lot Nebraska of hype. There's a lot they, they of Nebraska hype right now. There is, yeah. They play UTEP, Colorado, and North uh, Iowa, which is the FCS team as they're out of conference. Mm -hmm. All winnable games. All winnable games there. And they have an gonna incredibly be a, favorable Big Ten pull. Very. Very. And that's why you see you see this range for Nebraska of their over under and wins all over the place. Seen them as low as like six and a half, seven and a half. Seen them as high as even ten and a half. Bet River, it's, which is not a casino I'm familiar with, but I just was doing my research for the yeah. show. A a online casino, maybe they, maybe they have a physical location. I don't know. I don't care. But Bet River has their over under currently has Nebraska's over under currently at ten and a half, which is ludicrous. Until you actually start to look at the schedule. I have them, Kyle. Again, they, they got a really easy Big Ten poll schedule-wise. I yeah. have them having six easy wins on their schedule. Yeah. They have mm -hmm. six. Yes. We talked oh, yeah. about those bottom four teams. Remember those bottom four teams? Nebraska got three of them. Oh, yeah. They also got UCLA, who's not that good. Mm -hmm. That is six easy wins. I think they can beat Colorado. Yep. Yep. 
I think they're perfectly capable of beating Rutgers. I think mm-hmm. that they're they can very easily beat uh, USC. Wisconsin. I think that Wisconsin they are totally too. competitive with Wisconsin. I think they're totally competitive with Iowa. Mm-hmm. They you could hear my prediction. They with could the very easily only lose one game in the regular season. They are they're playing Ohio State. That's yeah, that is crazy. That is crazy to to think about. Uh, I'm not saying they will they for the five, record. They, they went five and seven last year, five and seven last year, three and six in the Big Ten. Flip that. They're going to go six and three in the Big Ten, finishing nine and three overall for the for the regular. Who, season. who are the three Big Ten losses, in your opinion? Ohio State at USC at uh, actually all of them are at Ohio State at USC at Iowa. Which I think is like one is totally possible. I'm not going to be like Kyle. No way. That's totally possible. Be- because I, if I look at those last three games, which are USC, Wisconsin, and Iowa, I think two and three is a pretty. Po- it's a very possible outcome. Uh, but I also think one and three is a pretty possible outcome. Here's the problem: Nebraska is a lot of hype right now. Um, considerable amount of hype. Uh, second year for Matt Rule. As the second year's magic year for the coach. Not that we gave Wisconsin that, but they have more talent issues than Nebraska has right now. Um, they have a pretty veteran defense, and they have a five-star, granted true freshman, but five-star quarterback, Dylan Rayola. Ohio State fans... You would know that Dylan Rayola was committed to Ohio State for uh, an extended amount of time. Um, Pretty decent defense, a inexperienced quarterback, but a very talented quarterback. I just I don't know if they have the skill players outside of uh, Thomas Madone, who's their tight end, who is very good. I, I don't know what they have offensively around Rayola to support a true freshman quarterback it is yeah. my big knock on Nebraska and why I think that the hype has gone too far. I would not take them at 10 and a f- at 10 and five. I would definitely do 10 and five under seven and five. I'm going over. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I already said, I, I think they, I see nine wins there, but yeah. I would say yeah. it's eight definitely, or nine. Definitely a step forward. Definitely a step forward from from last year. I would say it's eight uh, or nine. Yeah, U- USC, USC seven and a half wins. Seven well, they, and they, a half. they were eight and five. They were they were in they were eight and five last year. Five and four in the Pac twelve. Uh, looking at their schedule, they start off in neutral neutral game against LSU. I, I, I just realized I LSU. They lose that. Yeah, L- but I'm LSU not. plays USC and UCLA. This year, yeah, LSU's schedule is crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, in this new Utah era State, of college Utah football, State, we're in, there's an added Utah emphasis specifically Dame. to the conference schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Utah State and Notre Dame are the other two non-conference games there. Mm-hmm. I don't really have a I good think... read on Notre Dame this year, to be honest with you. So I don't know how to. I don't have a good read on Notre Dame. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Uh, so looking looking at the games here, I'm, I just it, it is tough to figure out who this USC team is because they they are without Caleb Williams, mm-hmm. new to the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, defense is still shaky. I mean, well, the defense is brand new, which just adds to the mystery of it. They brand yeah. new coaching staff. Alex Grinch was fired last year. They brought in a, I think, really good hires, by the way, on the defensive coaching so, staff. They brought in a bunch of transfers for the defensive side. So the defense, Jared, who knows? Uh, quarterback, will you call me, will you, no, as Kyle pointed out, Caleb Williams is gone. They still have Zachariah Branch, who's an excellent wide receiver. Yeah. They have a pretty, you know, a pretty good offensive line. Nothing crazy. And then on the defensive side, it's it's a bunch of new faces. So it's a bit of a mystery, USC. Mm-hmm. Will you call me crazy, Jared, if I yes. say that you... Okay, 
uh, <laughs> that USC will only have two losses in conference. Only two. So Penn State. So I have there. Are, I, I have USC going eight and four this year. Uh, I have their losses being LSU. Okay. At Michigan. Mm. Penn State. And um, where's the last one? In Notre Dame. So it's only one loss in conference. Oh, I'm sorry. Did well, no, one? I said two losses. I said two losses in conference, Michigan and Penn State. And then they oh, lose sorry. to LSU I Notre Dame out of conference. I forgot we already counted Penn State as a given. My bad. <laughs> um, I don't think they... I don't think they lose to Michigan. Okay. And I also think they, they do. They do play Nebraska, Wisconsin. I think Nebraska gives play, them a run for their money. Um, yeah, I think so too. Mm-hmm. I I think I, I Michigan. It just depends upon. I, I only I only gave the I gave the win to Mich- Michigan because it is, it is at Michigan. This will be the. Um, First time that USC will be playing a Big Ten in their very first Big Ten uh, conference game. Yeah, heading on over to Michigan here. I don't. I I will give the edge to to Michigan there. I'm I'm gonna just, go just uh, because just because of Michigan's defense will just USC is going to be all out of whack on the offense there to to start the season here. They play LSU. They're gonna they're gonna be non-existent there. They're gonna fix some things against Utah State, but they're gonna they're gonna have a have a nice warm welcome to the Big Ten when they come to Michigan and still find out that they can't do anything offensively. Well don't forget that Michigan will be coming off of a Texas ass whooping at that point in time too. That's true. That's true. So I have it I have it over well they have, have Arkansas State in between, but whatever. I'm gonna go under mm. just because USC feels like a mystery to me. So I'm just gonna go sure. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna err towards five hundred. All right. Uh we Iowa. mentioned um previous, we mentioned previously with um some teams having very favorable schedules. Yeah. I think Iowa has a very, very favorable schedule here. Eight and five is their over under. Have that, I'm smashing that over. <laughs> have them going ten and two. Have uh, them going ten and two, um, seven and two in conference here. Illinois State, Iowa State, and Troy is their out of conference. Three say, wins there. You say seven point two. I think they score a grand total of like seventy two points this year on offense, like. I mean, here's the storyline I wrote. Here's the storyline I wrote for for Iowa. A familiar refrain, Iowa's defense is stacked, but their offensive cupboard looks empty. Well, look, if you at the think, teams here. Okay, if okay, you okay. think let, 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 firing baby Ferentz was going to fix the issues, if you think bringing in a backup Michigan quarterback was going to fix their offensive issues, you are sadly mistaken. Their offense will continue to be garbage this year. Their defense yeah. stacked. Uh, some of the, uh, maybe the best linebacker core in the Big Ten, um, really good look, group, defensive look, back. Look, Their offensive look, line is play, even kind of shaky. But look at who they play. Like, oh, I know. Their schedule sucks. Almost everybody, almost everybody. They have six easy wins. Does not have a good, a good offense. So... They're gonna they're gonna struggle scoring against Iowa here. Win against Minnesota. Uh, they'll lose on the road to Ohio State. Uh, I got them winning Washington, beating at Michigan State, Northwestern, Wisconsin, UCLA, Maryland. But their second loss I got to Nebraska at the end of the year. So th- those are the two losses I have for Iowa is at Ohio State and home to Nebraska. I hear you on that, and I'm not again. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but I. I think they could lose to Wisconsin or Maryland as well. Like they're just so bad on offense, mm-hmm. but yeah, the incredibly favorable schedule. I, I hear you yeah. on that. And so that's why I'm probably going in half. I'm probably going to I'm probably going to join you 
but they're not that good. They're not a nine win team, except that it's totally feasible that they'll win nine games. Yeah. All right. Moving on to moving on to Michigan here. Uh, Fresno State, Texas, Arkansas State are their three out of conference games. Uh, win win loss, two, but not in that order. Two one, two and one. Okay. Uh, they are projected or over under is eight and a half. I think that's a really good number. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the under just based on their their schedule here. I got wins over Fresno State, Arkansas State, USC, Minnesota at Illinois, Michigan State, at Indiana, and Northwestern. So I got their five losses there to Texas, um, at Washington, Oregon, and uh, Ohio State. Am I missing one somewhere in there? I think they also lose to USC personally, but we've already disagreed on that when we were talking about USC. Um, (laughs) Yep. I think this is a 500 football team. I'm I'm going under hard. There's no yep, chance they yep. hit eight, let alone nine wins. They're going to get embarrassed by Texas. I think they lose to USC. I think they lose to Washington. I even feel like Michigan State's in play only because it's in it's as late mm. in the season as it is. Kyle, I know we aren't we don't have the bandwidth in this episode to talk about it. There's a guillotine over the head of this team right now. With pending incoming coaching Mm -hmm. suspensions, player, I don't think there'll be any player suspensions, but there's a guillotine hanging over this team's neck right now. If you were to take Michigan at eight and a half without some sort of safety net of, hey, if if any of the coaches get fired or suspended or whatever, the bet becomes not you'd be crazy in my opinion. They, their offense is Donovan Edwards and Colston Loveland. That's about it. They did bring in um, Josh uh, Preby from Northwestern to help make up for the six drafted offensive linemen that they lost. Um. So in their defense, as we've talked about a few different, we did an entire episode, I think back in February, which for the most part holds true still. If you want to go listen to it about why Michigan's going to be garbage this year, we did an entire episode on it months ago. Some things have changed since then, but I think it mostly still stands. Mm-hmm. I, I think Michigan's going to be garbage this year. I think there are five and five or, you know, a 500 football team. Um, They lost 17 starters and most of their staff off of last year's team, 17 out of 22 starters. I think they're, I think they have a, I think they have like 11 solid guys for the defense, but they have no answers for outside of like the safety room where they have some guys, but they have no depth for injuries, for fatigue, They are not a deep football team on the defensive side, and they're just not a good football team on the offensive side. Michigan's a 500 football team. I'm taking the under on that hard. Penn State. Penn State last year went 10 and three. Uh, Their projection is or over under is nine and five. Or nine and five, uh, nine point nine and a half. Um, Yeah, I'll take the over based on their their schedule. I. Yeah. Very favorable schedule, in my opinion. I agree. At, at West Virginia, Bowling Green, Kent State, as they're out of conference there, but they have the draws against Illinois, UCLA, uh, USC. I think would be a tough. Would be tough. It, it yeah. is over. It is at at USC. Um, they, and then they there, have there are bye. travel issues there. By the way, they're at Wisconsin, Ohio State, Washington, at Purdue, at Minnesota, Maryland. I think I think I see two losses here. I Penn State ten and two again, like last year. Um, two losses in the in the Big Ten year. I have it against at USC and um, and home to Ohio State. Th- those are the two I have for Penn State this year. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. Um, so over, yeah, you have over would be my projection. I agree. Um, for the record. Um, 
you got second year Drew Aller. And the problem there is that you still have the same head coach who's proven to not be a great developer of quarterbacks, in my opinion, in James Franklin. That being said, I think they made an excellent hire at offensive coordinator, Andy Coltilnicki. I mean, no, I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, but uh, he, I, I believe, was the offensive coordinator at Kansas last year. Um, Kansas had an excellent offense. Uh, I think that's an excellent hire. You know, they're no longer in the Big Ten East because there is no more Big Ten East. They still pull Ohio State, but they don't pull Michigan. I and the expand you add that in with the expanded playoffs. This year's Penn State's year to take mm-hmm. the yep. next step as a program. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I, they're they're right there in the hunt to to make it into the uh, uh, into the playoffs here. I, I think if you're, if you're absolutely. Penn State, you can't. To me, if you are Penn State, you have to consider yourself a playoff team now. Yes, absolutely. Yep. That needs to be your standard if you're Penn State. Yes. Yep. Yep. So over, Jared, over, over. All right. Oregon, 10 and a half. Uh, not going to bore you here because I know that we, we've talked about Oregon before and, um, Oregon's going to be really good, really, really good. Uh, I'm going to take the over. I think they'll go 11 and one this year, eight and one in, in conference here. Uh, very, 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 very favorable, uh, out of conference, just like Ohio state, out of conference, very favorable. Idaho, Boise State, and at Oregon State. No, no, no questions in my mind that they're 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 a playoff team here. Uh, Eleven yeah. and one is my projection. I agree. Um, I think they actually have the best chance of running the table in the entire Big Ten. Mm-hmm. In all honesty, more so than Ohio State, and I say that mostly because Oregon one doesn't have to play Penn State and. In the Ohio State versus Oregon matchup, they're in Oregon. While I think Ohio State has a better chance at the national title, I believe Oregon, uh, y'all might get mad at me for this, will at least win the regular season of the Big Ten this year, I think, is the most likely team to win at least the regular season of the Big Ten this year. I I think the Big Ten title game is Ohio State and Oregon. And I think at that point, Oregon is more. I'm not saying that they will beat Ohio State. I I am saying that that feels more likely than not as to what has happened. I'm giving Oregon a slight edge there. Um, This is a great team. This team lost to Washington twice last year, both games by a field goal. Washington went on to the national title game. They didn't make the playoffs last year, but this was a playoff quality team last year. And unlike Michigan and Washington, the two teams that did end up going the national title game, this team brings back a excellent core of players. And where they lost players, they did a great job supplementing via the portal. Like you lose Bo Nix. Okay. Bring in Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma. Not saying that they like won't miss a step, but it's a great pickup for them. I think that Mm -hmm. they made some, you know, they went out and got Evan Stewart from Texas A&M. They got Jabbar Muhammad from Washington. uh, Jamari Caldwell from Houston. It wasn't like a big splash portal outside of uh, Gabriel, obviously. But I think Oregon is excellent. Um, I I think they're excellent. Um, Yeah, that's it. Like, I I think that I'm going to go over on 10 and a half. Um, You got them going undefeated? I mean, because I said I said I said I got them going eleven and one, but but winning but winning the Big Ten. The the Ohio State game is a toss up, in my opinion. 
Hmm. I do favor them slightly at this point in time. I, when it comes to the week of October 12th, I might change my mind, but at this time, if I were forced to do a full projection, yeah, I'm picking Oregon to going undefeated a regular season. Obviously I think they're the most likely team in the big 10 to go undefeated. Yep. All right. All right. And Ohio state 10 and a half over under. I got the over. 11 and one, I won't worry in details. Their one loss is against Oregon. Yeah, which again is a toss up game. And even mm-hmm. if they beat Oregon, they have to go to Penn State to play Penn State, which is a tough football game. I do not see this Ohio State team. I don't want to say that. I, 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 I can foresee them going undefeated in the regular season. I can foresee that. I wouldn't put a, b- a great deal of money on it, though. Okay. I. Th- I think between Oregon and Penn State, two of the best teams in college football this year. Um, I mean, the, there are three teams. Again, we're not doing a tier list, but to me, there's a. If you were doing a tier list, the three S teams would be Penn State, Oregon, and Ohio State. Ohio State has to play both of those other teams. This is a mm-hmm. tough draw for Ohio State as far as Big Ten schedule. Because of that. And by the way, the stretch, Kyle, this stretch, look at this stretch, Iowa, who Ohio State is better than, but they can't be thinking that going into that game. Then Oregon, then a bye week, Nebraska, Penn State, that's their October. Their October is Iowa, a home Iowa, road Oregon, home Nebraska, Excuse me, uh, Penn State's actually uh, November 2nd. And then at Penn State, that's an incredibly tough four game stretch. And I'm sorry, I just don't see Ohio State coming out of it undefeated. That being said, I think they only drop one of those games and I think they still end up in the Big Ten title game. And even if they don't, they still end up in the playoffs. And at the end of the day. If you're Ohio State. You one beat Michigan, you two win the national title. Mm-hmm. And, All right, and there we go. Yeah, I, I don't care if you lose to Oregon as long as you beat Penn State and as long, you know, because that, that is the added bonus of having to play both Oregon and Penn State. Is that you're not going to get like screwed over by tiebreakers if it in fact is those three teams at the end you will at least have the tiebreaker over the one that you did beat. If it comes down to that. So you have that in your back pocket at the very least. But yeah, it's going to be that four game stretch is going to be insanely difficult. And I just don't see Ohio State coming out of it undefeated. Whether, you know, because by the way, with Nebraska sitting in between Penn State and Oregon, you could beat Oregon, beat Penn State and lose to Nebraska. That is... Not a ridiculous statement. That four yeah. game stretch, I simply so, don't see Ohio State going four and oh through. I just don't see it. Yep. So I got in 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 Big Ten here, Oregon, Ohio State, each losing one game, and both of them going eleven and one overall. And then I got three teams with uh, going seven and two in the Big Ten, and that's Iowa, USC, and Penn State. And in my mind, there. And okay. two of those three teams goes 10 and two. So it, it, it would be, it would be a really good showing for, for the big 10 this year. If you got, you got four teams that four teams in the big 10 that go 10 plus wins in the season. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the playoffs is going to be dominated by the big 10 and the sec or, or yeah, big Absolutely. 10 and the sec. Cause like, if you look over at the sec side, Bama is not going to be the Bama that we're used to, but they're still a playoff team, especially in the Mm -hmm. 12 team era. So you're very, 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 very easily looking at Penn State or excuse me, Alabama, Georgia, LSU and Texas, I think are shoe in absolute shoe in playoff teams this year on the SEC side. And I think that you at least have three of those teams, at least three of those teams on the Big Ten side. 
And depending upon how good Nebraska or USC are, you could very easily see one of those teams slip into the playoffs as well. You could also see Iowa slip into the playoffs again, just because their schedule is garbage, not because they're actually that good. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. We don't want Iowa want to be one of our representatives in the playoffs and then get smoked. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is it. Um, we are way over in time here, so we are. we're not going to waste any more time here. Um, anything else? Um, anything else you want to add on before we? Was, that, that's my job to ask you if there's anything in Kyle's corner. Oh, um, yeah. Crew dominating the crew dominating the pitch here in the MLS. And Archie gets his statue at the Rose Bowl. That's pretty rad. How many people have statues at the Rose Bowl? Um, is it? I don't have enough one? time to look. So, I think because I think it, I think it might be one. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I think the answer might be one. Um, no, they got they got more. Ah, damn. I believe I believe there's. Are they football players? And are they UCLA football players? Because if they're UCLA football players, it doesn't count. Because they're not, like, they're not there for because of the Rose Bowl. They're there because of US, or uh, UCLA. Did I say UC? Did I say USC? I meant UCLA. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, so, I don't have time to. I don't have time that, to look. Fine. So I'll just. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Also, if there's anyone there for the Olympics, that also doesn't count. I'm talking like specifically football, specifically for the Rose Bowl. We'll figure that out later. Or hey, if you're in the YouTube comment in the YouTube comments and you know the answer to that, let us know. Or if you're in the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com, let us know. Um, if you want to buy a T-shirt, go to seven zero seven one dot thesloopcast.com or merch.thesloopcast.com. I'm wearing the uh, seventy seventy one, the seven zero seven one Cincinnati shirt right now. Kyle is not wearing merch right now. Bad Kyle. Um, yep, bad me. <laughs> But that's it. That's the end of the, that is the end of the show. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, brought to you by Heart Attack Man. Uh, Heart Attack Man is out of I forget. I'm going to say that Northeast Ohio, maybe Akron, Canton, Kent, Cleveland. I forget. Um, also, I could just be totally wrong. But anyway, they're an Ohio-based band. They're called Heart Attack Man. The name of this song is Stick Up. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports look podcasters. Once again, this is Heart Attack Man. Heart Attack Man.